But the way God deals with you is through your spirit. You won't get any feelings, outward feelings. If you're feeling something outwardly, that's something else. There are other spirits out there, demonic spirits, or it could be just your flesh. When God deals with you and I today, you have a, you're, made, you're a triune just like the Godhead. There's three parts to you. There's your spirit. There's your soul. And then there's your body. Now, we say in the world, body, soul, spirit, but God calls it, 1 Thessalonians 5, spirit first, soul second, body third. God is less concerned about your physical body than anything. He's more concerned about your soul and definitely the most concerned about your spirit. Your spirit is where you connect with God. God, the Holy Ghost, comes in and resides in your spirit when you trust Christ as your Savior. Then he gives you some words to build up in your soul. That's the real you, by the way. Your soul is you. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. That's you. That's the part of you that goes to heaven when you die. And if you're lost today, if you haven't trusted Christ, when you die and they put your body six feet under or they cremate you, your soul, your spirit goes back to God that gave it. He's the father of spirit. Spirit gives life. Your spirit goes back to him, but that's just life. Your soul, the real part of you that exists forever, the conscious part of you, that goes to hell. See, if you're not in Christ, you're going to hell. That's the bad news. Good news is if, if you trust Christ, you go to heaven. Then your soul and spirit go to heaven. Your body goes into the ground. That's the way you connect to this physical world. That's your body. But that's going to die one day. In fact, it's dying daily. That's why you get old. That's why you get sick. That's why you hurt, and that's why you die. God is not going to heal the, the member of the body of Christ supernaturally, physically, until the rapture. That's when we get the redemption of our bodies, okay? Romans 8, Philippians chapter 3. Until then, you're going to suffer the, the pains of this life. But that's okay because God is not dealing with that physical anyway. He's dealing in your inner man, the spirit and soul. That's what Paul is saying. He's talking about the grace of God today. Um, go with me to Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. How does grace work? We're going to see how grace works. When Paul says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with thy spirit, we need to know how God's grace works. Look at Romans chapter 4. Verse 4. Romans 4, verse 4. Now, to him that worketh. Now, I told you when you see E-T-H on the end of a word, that's continual. It's throughout your life. If you're trying to work for it. Now, to him that worketh is the reward. There's a reward of the inheritance that for the saint. But if you're working for it in your own flesh, you won't get it. Watch what he said. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckon of grace, but of what? Debt. But can I tell you something? God ain't going to owe any man anything. You owe God a debt if you're a sinner. Now Christ paid our debt, but God don't owe anybody anything. No, no, no. You won't get the reward if you're working you're under performance-based acceptance like a law. Performance, legalism. Verse 5. Romans 4, verse 5, but to him that worketh not. Oh, now he's not saying that we aren't going to do good works. Speaking to you today is a good work. We're created in Christ Jesus, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, unto good works. But the motivation is the word of God that I've taken in over the years working out. It's his life coming through me. Look at this. But to him that worketh not, verse 5 of Romans 4. But believeth, see, constantly believing, on him that justifieth, constantly justify, the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. God's grace, the only thing that God's grace will accept, my friend, is faith plus nothing. When Paul says faith, he means faith plus no works. When James says faith, he means faith plus works. When Paul says faith, he means faith without works. That's what he's saying. Go with me to Romans chapter 6, if you will. Romans chapter 6, look at verse 14. If you want to break the power of sin in your life as a believer, you have an addiction. I've run into men with drug addiction, sex addiction, women who are addicted to gossiping, whatever it is over the years. And they say, well, brother, I just can't break that addiction. Alcoholism, whatever, whatever it is. Well, Paul is about to tell you how to break that sinful addiction in your life. Verse Verse, chapter 6, verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. 
You're not under a performance-based acceptance system to please God. You can rest in who you, are, who you are in Christ, who your Savior, God made your Savior to be. Now, as you grow in Pauline doctrine, the power of sin, Romans 6, the body of sin be destroyed. Then henceforth, we should not serve sin. As you grow in Romans through Philemon, and yea, the word rightly divided, the things of this world will come strangely dim. Those sinful tendencies will just start to melt away. You'll be more concerned about who God has made you in Christ. But see, when he says you're not under law, you're not under the law. That verse, Romans 6, 14, I think Paul has in mind, in the Holy Ghost, a passage in Psalms where David says, your law has kept me from sin. In fact, David used the same words. He says, sin doesn't have dominion over me because I'm under the law. David, because he was a Jew under the law, had the fear of the, of the law, the fear of God's cursing, the fear of God's taking his blessing away. He says, take not thy Holy Spirit. By the way, the Holy Spirit, I don't know if I said it. When you see the word Holy Spirit, Psalm 51, it talks about his presence. The, whole, the, the, the term Holy Spirit has to do with the spirit the presence of Almighty God with the believer. The term Holy Ghost, 89 times in your King James Bible, 42 times in the book of Acts, because that's when he came on the scene. That has to do with his person, his power, his ministry. He's not just there, he's active in your life as a believer. Well, today, unlike David under the law, where law was a fear to motivate him to do good work, hey, the Jews did good works, because if they didn't, God would pound them. Just read the Old Testament and see how they failed. They failed. He pounded them. They failed. He pounded them. He'd give them another chance. They, they were children. Children are going to fail you. If you've got these high expectations for the children, just know they're going to let you down. But give them time to grow. Because God deals with the grace believer as an adult. We're not under a performance-based acceptance of tutors and governors, Galatians 4. We're under, hey, we're under grace. We're under the grace message. There are grace commands. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 37, Paul says that there's grace commands. The things that he writes in Romans through Philemon are the commandments of the Lord. So, yes, there are grace commands. They're motivated by God's love and not fear, okay? Go with me to Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11, look at verse 6. My friend, Paul, as he concludes the book about grace, Galatians. He says, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Don't you be under performance. Look at this. Romans 11, verse 6. He says, and if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. You see that? Hold on. Paul says, if God is going to do it by grace, then it's no more of works. Because the moment you add a work to it, whether it, a work is any physical thing that a man does, whether it's water baptism, water, uh, 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 which is, has to be done by a man, whether it was a physical circumcision that God gave Israel, anything a man has to do to make you right with God, which water baptism was required for salvation, physical circumcision was required to be part of the blessing of the Abrahamic covenant. Anything physical that you have to do, you have an old grace. Hey, he says there in verse 6, and if by grace, then there's no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. The moment you add just one ounce of human effort to God's grace, you dealt, it's no more grace. The opposite is true. Verse 6 of Romans 11, but if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. By the way, you can't, what God is doing here is God's grace through faith plus works. The works here are the issue in the law. You could say, hey, I believe, I believe God. I'm a Jew back here. I say, I believe God. I believe I'm a sinner. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Moses would say, uh, hold on. You go and get that lamb, and you take it to the priest in the tabernacle, or you take it to the priest in the temple. You go and offer that, that sac sacrifice. Because that guy, I don't care what he say about the word. If he didn't offer that sacrifice, he'd die in his sins. Jesus Christ, the true Lamb of God, already paid for our sins. We don't have to offer a sacrifice. He, did, he died on the cross as a sacrifice almost 2,000 years ago. Okay? It's grace today. 
One more passage. Go with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Paul calls it the dispensation of the grace of God. It's what God is dispensing today. Ephesians 3, as we conclude, we'll go back and look at one verse in Galatians. Ephesians chapter 3, look at verse 1 and 2. For this cause, and the cause is that God is building a temple, a living temple called the body of Christ. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, Paul's our apostle. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you. And now Paul is going to explain, read Ephesians 3, about the mystery. The mystery of Christ. The preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of mystery. It's the grace message. Now, just like in the book of Genesis chapter 6, God, God had, Noah had grace in the eyes of God. And when you read the Old Testament, the word grace is littered through there. It always in his sight, in his eyes. Even though there was grace in the dispensation of law, it wasn't a dispensation of grace. They were under performance. God was still gracious. He's always gracious. He is gracious. Here, the whole thing is pure grace. When Paul says grace, here, I like to put this. Pure grace. Undiluted, pure grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. God's unmerited favor given out freely, liberally, joyfully because of the riches of his grace. That's a whole different program. That's the program you and I are under until the rapture. Then God will go back to the law with Israel. Well, as we conclude, go back to Galatians. Go back to Galatians. Paul is our grace apostle. Now, my friend, we're coming down to the end of this study. Look, look at verse 18. Brethren, Beloved of the Lord is what brethren mean, beloved of the Lord. The grace, God's riches at Christ's expense, his unmerited favor freely given, that, that grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that sent him to the cross, be with your spirit. He's going to work in your inner man. And that word amen, it is so. It's like putting the rubber stamp on the fact that what God is doing today is grace. My friend, if you've never experienced the grace of God, let me tell you, today is the day of salvation. If anyone has never loved you enough to ask you that if you were to die today, you know for sure that you have all your sins forgiven, eternal life, this moment in the heavenly places with the Lord, all sins forgiven right now, you need to make that decision. God has not promised you another day. The gospel of grace is so clear, it's so pure, it's beautiful. People complicate it by putting all types of conditions on it. But the grace of God says that Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross to pay for your sins. According to the scriptures, he was buried and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Third day, witness to his, who he was as the Son of God. Third day, witness to the life, the resurrection life. That's your Savior. Now, if you've never trusted him, why don't you put your faith and trust in him right now? You don't have to move a muscle, pray a prayer. You don't have to give, a, give some money. You just believe God. He looks at your heart and sees your heart rest in his, in his son. See, God can see in your spirit. He sees you. And he sees you believing you're the sinner Christ died for. If you've made that decision, give me a call. If you made that decision, you got saved. Now, whether you're saved, you just got saved now, or you, you, you've been saved, give me a call. I'm Ron Knight. Here's my phone number. UnlockYourBible.com, that's our website. I got articles on there. I got audio of this program. I got materials. But my friend, we do have an assembly right here in the Twin Cities where other people, like myself, believe in this message of grace. Rejoice in it. Understand the Bible. We have a wonderful time studying the scriptures. You need to be a part of that. Until then, I'm Ryan Knight saying, may the grace of our Lord be with you all. Amen.